let me invite you to join me in the call to worship and uh, ask you to respond with the bold print. Come give to the Lord your praises of thanksgiving. Come this day, grateful for God's wondrous gifts to us. Praise God with great enthusiasm for his mighty power and love. We celebrate that love that frames our lives. It is a wonderful thing to praise God. So I greet you today in the name of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, through the powerful presence and working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is called Gather Us In, and uh, like I said, I invite you to sing along with Marie if you're able to. So uh, let us worship God with this beautiful song. <clears throat> away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in Amen. I was going to sing, but I couldn't get Tom's attention. I wanted him to cut my mic. Um, <clears throat> so be sure to do it for the next song, please, Tom. <laughs> uh, before we uh, acknowledge our sins to God this morning and seek his forgiveness, join me in this call to confession. If we say that we have not sinned, we are fooling ourselves, and the truth isn't in our hearts, but if we confess our sins to God, he can always be trusted to forgive us and take our sins away. So let us pray in unison as we come to God. In the midst of our summer lives, O oh Lord, so many things have claimed our attention. We worked hard this year to earn a little rest and recreation, to break away from the stresses of our everyday living. But in the midst of all this change, we have too often pushed our worship of you aside. We focus so much on our needs for physical change and peace that we've neglected our spiritual hungers and thirst. Forgive us when we are tempted to stray from our worship of you and focus entirely on ourselves and our own needs. As we celebrate this day, Help us to remember all the wondrous things you continue to do for us. Let us look at the world as a place of delight. 
And when we encounter situations in which sorrow and hurt abound, help us to be ready to bring hope and peace. Be with us in this warm days of summer, preparing us for ministry and mission in your holy name. Amen. All you who seek God and who have set your hope on Jesus Christ, hear the good news. We have received forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace. As forgiven and beloved children of God, let us set our hope on Christ and live for the praise of his glory. Amen. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from them. So please now join me in this uh, responsive reading of an adapted Psalm 107 as we, uh, as we just look out on the water and, uh, and take in this beautiful sight and uh, this beautiful day that God has given us. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed. Some went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. I saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. And cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it blew calm, and it guided them to their desired freedom. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. We have received again the peace of God this morning through our confession of our sins and through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. As people of peace, I invite you to extend the sign of peace to those around you or amongst us. <clears throat> May the peace of God be with all of you. Let us now praise God with uh, a song called 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord. Um, I love this song, and so thank you, Marie, for leading us. Um, Tom, remember to cut my mic because I'd like to sing this with. <laughs> yes, Let us uh, all sing this together. It's got a beautiful chorus, so please uh, raise your voices. Bless the Lord.
chorus together one more time. Bless the Lord. Amen. I want to read to you uh, just a few verses from Matthew chapter 8, and uh, I'm sure this is a story you're very familiar with. Um, but before we do that, I invite you to just bow your heads in prayer as we ask God to speak to us today through his word. Lord, our God, we, uh, we do praise you because you bless us in so many ways, and we want to bless you in return. It is when we uh, sit here and, uh, and look at your creation, the beauty of nature, that we truly feel your presence and acknowledge your spirit. And, uh, and we thank you for this opportunity to come together as people of God, as your family, your children. And Lord, we come from many different places and we all have many different things going on in our lives. And sometimes we don't really understand why things happen the way they do. But I do believe that you have brought all of us, every single one here today, to this place for a reason. And my prayer is that your spirit will just open our hearts to be open for that reason. And that you would speak to us today through your word and lift us up with your message. I pray that if there's anything that, that might be an obstacle in us being open and willing to receive your presence and your word today, that your spirit will take care of it now so that we can uh, be here in expectation. And I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Matthew 8, uh, verses 23 to 27, as we uh, look out on the, on the bay. And when he, when, when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him up saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid? You of little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a dead calm. They were amazed saying, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, you know, since the beginning of June, we've been officially in the hurricane season, right? And we've just had the first tropical storm of this year with the name of Elsa. And over the last decade or so, we have had some of the most devastating hurricanes in history, Sandy, Irma, Harvey, and on and on. Storms whose impact on the lives of people continue long after the clouds have parted and the winds died down. And they are predicting another really active season uh, for this year. Now, the fishermen of Galilee didn't put names to the many storms that came streaming out of the Valley of the Doves on the western shore. But they did know that 
these storms were a real threat to their lives and their livelihoods. And they knew that whenever a squall blew up on the lake, it was a reminder that they were still subject to the, to the forces of nature. And so here in our reading from Matthew, Jesus and his disciples find themselves on a boat being tossed around by an unexpected and violent storm. It says in verse 24, a windstorm arose on the sea so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves. A windstorm struck and uh, waves started splashing into the boat and it was about to sink. Now, I know some of you have boats. I don't know if you've ever had that kind of experience. And these hardened fishermen are filled with fear and panic and desperation. In the midst of all the chaos, Jesus was asleep. He was in the back of the boat with his head on a pillow taking a nap. The disciples, meantime, were concerned and in a panic, and they went and woke him up saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. Come on, Jesus, wake up. Don't you see that we are dying here? And he said to them, why are you afraid? You of little faith. And then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a, a dead calm. Jesus doesn't answer their question. Instead, he stands and he addresses the wind and the waves. And he tells them to be still and they obey him. And there was a dead calm. And they were amazed. So maybe you're wondering, you know, how did he do that? How did he calm the storm? How did he turn a, a violent, raging sea into a placid pond of tranquility? And why didn't he explain what happened to the disciples? Give them some kind of lecture on his humanity and his divinity. The fact that even though he was in human form, he is still God. But rather than talk about this display of power, Jesus instead asks them, a very simple question. Why are you afraid? You have little faith. Why are you fearful? You have so little faith. And I'm sure the disciples were thinking something like, well, of course we're afraid. We're in a category five storm here. We almost died. And then you stand in the boat and raise your hands and and the forces of nature obey you. So yes, we were afraid. I think Jesus wants to point something out to them. He wants them to see that, that in the middle of the storm, in the midst of their distress and fear, he was still in the boat with them. They woke Jesus up so that he could share in their panic. Jesus, on the other hand, wants them to have faith, not fear. And what he's saying is, always remember, I'm in the boat with you. I'm with you in the eye of the storm. And I will get you through the storm. I don't know exactly what's going on in your life. And I don't want to generalize and maybe your life is perfect. I don't know. But I think that for most of us, our lives are filled with storms. The storms of life hit us too, often with great fury. We have to face many strong winds and rough seas. 
many devastating hurricanes can hit our lives, no matter where we live or in what stage of life we find ourselves in. Something like, like hurricane cancer or hurricane divorce, hurricane unemployment, hurricane coronavirus, hurricane depression, hurricane financial crisis, hurricane grade point average, hurricane child illness, hurricane whatever. I mean, what's your hurricane? If you had to put a name to your storm in life, what would the name of your hurricane be? And I'm sure you've wondered, where is Jesus in the midst of these storms? And you've probably asked the question many times, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus when when the typhoon of devastating illness hits? Where is Jesus when the lightning strike of a loved one's death leaves you in shock? When you say, Lord, save me because I'm going to drown in this storm. Where are you, God, when the, when the waves of death and destruction and doubt threaten to sink me? So where is it? Where is Jesus in the storms that, that you and I are facing? I believe he's with you. He's in the boat with you. And what it does is he invites you to turn from fear to faith. Not to panic in despair, but to have hope and faith in his presence in your life. To remember that he is ultimately in control. He reigns over chaos and the forces of evil. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you regardless of what circumstance you find yourself in. Have faith in me. I know that there are serious storms with memorable names in your life. And maybe you are afraid that the boat that you're in is going to sink. And I think that is understandable. I know you see the, the wind and you see the waves because I do too. And I know you are living through some hurricane storms and it seems like it's overwhelming. I've also at times felt like I'm going to go under and drown. That's when we need to believe in Jesus Christ and his resurrection power. Believe in God who says in Isaiah 43, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. So what if we could focus our eyes not on the wind and the waves, but on Jesus instead? What if we could put our trust in the one whom the wind and the waves ultimately obey. When the ship is tossed, we can only think of our doom. I think it's natural, but what if we can imagine the calm and the hope of a new beginning and a new creation? So listen, your faith in Jesus doesn't mean that you won't suffer. Jesus himself suffered and died while holding on to faith. Jesus is not going to remove every storm from your life. Your faith does mean, however, that you can trust Jesus to be with you in the storm. 
that you can know and believe that is in the boat with you and that you can trust him for your future, a future made possible by an empty tomb and the defeat of death. Do you still remember your baptism? You were baptized with what? With water. You were baptized with water in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, the water that, that can sometimes be a terrible storm is also a sign of new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the gospel and for the message of Jesus. And thank you for, for this reminder today that regardless of what we face in this life, that your son is with us, is with us in the boat, is with us in the storm, and he has the power to bring dead calm to our lives, even in the midst of these terrible storms that we all face. I pray that your spirit will constantly remind us of his presence in our lives and that we will truly not fear, but have faith in the power of the resurrected Christ. Lord, we know that there's suffering in this life. This is not heaven. And we know that we will encounter many different storms and, and you may choose to take that storm away or you may choose not to, but you will always be with us and give us your power and your strength to somehow get through it. Help us to focus on the future that is already assured in the one who conquered death in your son, Jesus. Amen. As we respond to God's word, I uh, <clears throat> just want to point out to you at the beginning of the walkway over there is a table and uh, there's a basket. We're taking up a free will offering. Uh, and when it says free will, it means you have the choice. <laughs> okay. Uh, but those of you who are part of our church, you can also uh, send in your offering to uh, our church office, or you can do it online through Tithely and, uh, and make your donation that way. I do want to encourage you, if you want to keep in touch with Faith Church, we have a, a new website and we have a beautiful app that, you know, shares many things with you and also the messages of each Sunday are on there. So, so look for our app. Um, uh, if you need information, just contact Madeline, our, our office administrator, and, uh, and she will, she will uh, assist you with that. But now let us reflect on uh, God's word, this message that, that was just shared with us from, from, from the gospel. As we uh, look out on the dead calm of the waters, uh, let's listen to uh, the offertory music, which is, how can I keep from singing? My life goes on in endless song, above earth's lamentations. I hear the real, the far off hymn that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear its music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? While though the tempest loudly roars, I hear the truth it liveth. And though the darkness around me close, 
songs in the night it giveth no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock i'm clinging since love is lord of heaven and earth how can i keep from singing when tyrants tremble in their fear and hear their death now ringing when friends rejoice both far and near how can i keep from singing in prison cell and dungeon vile our thoughts to them are winging when friends by shame are undefiled how can i keep from singing amen that was beautiful thank you we are changing up the order of the liturgy just a little bit um, <clears throat> um we want to remember those who passed away next and then uh, do the prayer of uh, thanksgiving and intercession and after that we will uh, sing our closing hymn and then invite you to uh, all walk down to the to the edge of the dock as we uh, put the the reef in the water but um, <clears throat> as is our custom on this day we do remember those who uh, who passed away in the past year and uh, Again, I just want to express my condolences to the families. Um, this is, you know, from personal experience, one of the hardest things to deal with in life. And we all deal with it differently. And we all have different schedules of overcoming loss in our lives. And so wherever you are on that journey, I just want to... Uh, <clears throat> encourage you and pray for God's peace and comfort in your life as you mourn the loss of your loved one. Um, may you remember the love and the beautiful things and may you forgive whatever needs to be forgiven. And may you be thankful for the time that you were able to spend with this person. So today as we remember, and I'll uh, just leave a moment of silence between the different names. Uh, Vida Bambutas. Julia Foreman. Joseph Sawatsky. And Gail Shannon. As we pray, just uh, the prayer will end with the singing of the Lord's Prayer, which will be led by, by Marie at the end of our prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, in this moment, we give you thanks as we remember those loved ones who've passed on in the last year. We give you thanks and praise for Vida and Julia and Joseph and Gail. We thank you for all in them that was good 
and kind and loving. Thank you for their love that they showed to these families. We know that they are missed terribly. And I pray for all these families in their coming to terms with their grief and loss. Help us and help them remember that there is a new creation. There is a new day. And that somehow they will come through the storm and one day be reunited with their loved ones. I pray for peace and comfort for these families. And Father, I thank you also that your grace is sufficient for all of us in whatever we encounter in this life. So I lift up those with needs today, those who are struggling with illness or depression or spiritual ailments or emotional disease or physical illness, God, whatever their needs are, I lift them up before you and I pray for your blessing in their lives. I pray for your church and for all your people, especially for Community Church of Douglaston. We pray for your blessing upon us and that we can continue our ministry and be a faithful witness in this community and, and beyond. Thank you for our members and thank you for all our friends. I lift all of them up before you. And God, we thank you that you are always with us. We pray for your blessing upon all of us this day and tomorrow and also into the future. And we say all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us this family prayer that we will now sing in conclusion of this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we uh, <clears throat> conclude this part of our worship service with our closing hymn, um, I do want to invite you next Sunday, our worship service is at 9.30 a.m. It will be for the rest of the summer. We'll be gathering at Community Church of Douglaston, and also uh, there's a link available for our worship service that will be streamed online, live. And, uh, and also um, <clears throat> at one o'clock today, we will have our food share, our food distribution uh, opportunity to, to serve those in need in our community. That's at one o'clock at, uh, at our, in our parking lot. And, and if any of you can help with that and, and, and be a blessing to others because we are blessed, then uh, you're welcome to join us for that at one o'clock in the parking lot today. Let us close with this hymn called Eternal Father Strong to Save. And after that, I will invite you to join me as we walk down uh, the reef to the end of the dock.
the we will do the benediction um, after we put the reef in the water. And uh, those family members who are here, I would love for you to uh, to walk with me first. If we could just give them the opportunity. So let's uh, let's do that now. Thank you. 